Hey, what is up guys? BJ Dell back with an all new weekly art challenge review video. Last week's word was self-portrait, so let's see what you guys came up with. All right, guys, so let's jump into today's video and see what you guys came up with for the self-portrait topic for the week. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't consider all of the submissions for this week uh, just based on the guidelines for this one uh, in the video and then also in the introduction post for this week's challenge. Uh, one of the guidelines was you had to attach the picture of yourself along with the drawing that you did. And a lot of people did not do that. So the, the only people that were considered for the video were the ones that did that just because I wanted to show the picture along with the actual drawing and didn't want to have to dive through people's you know facebook profiles and and dig for the picture that looked most like the one that they did so that's why if if yours didn't make the video and you wonder why one of the things i always say i haven't really talked about it much in the past few videos but if you're new to the channel these videos that i do it's not the the best ones that get picked it's not the worst ones that need the most work um Honestly, it's the stuff that stands out that I can actually talk about and make it a learning experience. Uh, so I also like to not pick the same people week in and week out. So if you watch, you know, this week, this week, and this week, you're going to see the same person every single time. So I like to mix it up, but I also like to find stuff that I can kind of turn into a, a learning lesson. So that's why the ones this week got picked. So the first one up is David, and I think David did a really good job on this. So this one has a, a really kind of traditional uh, caricature type of style to it. Proportions are just crazy. You've got the really close inset eyes together. Uh, you've got the, the big forehead that goes back in the distance and then it gets really small here up at the top and then the large beard. And I think uh, David did a really great job of not nailing in the likeness by identifying some key points. And that's one of the big things, especially if you're doing cartoon drawings like this of uh, people or self portraits or what have you is to really kind of bring home a few key points that anybody looking at it can identify. Okay. That's one of the defining characteristics of whoever you're drawing. So in this case, obviously the beard is going to be a huge one. David did a great job of bringing the beard out. It really kind of is the central focus point, And I think that's great. The next of course is the glasses, which, you know, the beard goes directly into the gra glasses, which is fantastic. The eyes being close together, you know, they're not so much like that, but it is just a cool design standpoint. So the fact that the beard looks awesome and perfect, how David looks and the glasses, you can do fun stuff like this with the eyes, just because it doesn't have to be an exact representation when you've got so many other things that go for it. You can do fun stuff like that that makes the drawing more interesting. And then the way that he brought the uh, the forehead back and smaller up here, it just all ties in together really well. Coloring and shading is really well done too, so fantastic job, David. The only thing I would probably change on this one is the, the way that this blocks out into the corner here and kind of ends i would make this shoulder drop down a little bit further here and not bring it all the way out there uh with perspective and proportion wise since you got this kind of three quarters view this side over here is gonna you know be bigger than anything over here so the fact that this shoulder kind of cuts off here and this one comes out if you had the rest of the drawing uh to be you know correct this would have to come out like all the way here which would look a little weird but i think just bringing that shoulder down right there and just dropping it a little bit lower instead of it trailing off there i think it would be a little bit better and make the overall design pop even more and make this this neck and the the beard region stand out even more so fantastic job david thanks so much for sharing really appreciate it enjoyed your comments the other day too uh, next up is Key K, and this one is really, really good. Went with a more realistic approach. A lot of these are cartoony in today's, and I think this one is fantastic. A very uh, traditional, like, pencil charcoal type of self-portrait, and I think you just nailed the likeness. Uh, I know with drawing realistically like this, it's really hard to get the likeness, especially with the eyes. You know, they always say the, the eyes are the soul and uh, the windows to the soul, and it's really hard to kind of get that soulful correct look with the eyes and i think these look really really well uh they look like you so uh, really good job there 
and just the technique used in the hair and the shading it's just really well done so fantastic job uh the one thing i would probably kind of pay a little bit of attention to and with this new series coming up the cartooning 101 the next one that i'm working on right now is uh, how to draw the nose and this one with the nose you could probably look at the nose and see here that perspective and proportions are a little bit off if we go down here, you'll see the way that the bridge comes down into the front of the nose. Let me get on the right layer here. Comes down to the front of the nose and then down here to the septum and this septum here and the way it drops from that front part of the nose is gonna kind of break the nose in half. So you've got the nostril here and then you've got the other nostril set on the other side of this behind. And you can see here, you kind of brought the bridge down and this nostril is set here on the, the wrong side of the bridge. So if you use that technique that I showed in a couple of the, the initial how to draw heads videos and use that technique of using the triangle, you could use this to kind of get the correct perspective to it. And you'll see here that your nostril then is gonna be down here. This brings this around and then on this back side is where that other uh, nostril is going to be in the side of the nose over there. But uh, other than that, absolutely fantastic job. So definitely just try, uh, you know, sketching out some noses and getting the, the building blocks for those down and you will be golden, but uh, really, really good job. And I appreciate you sharing that Kike. So fantastic. Uh, next up is Robert. And this one I really love. Uh, number one, Robert, your style is fantastic. Um, kind of cartoony mixed with pop art mixed with a little bit of lowbrow and i like that combination i think it looks really good and just like i talked about with david's roberts here you can see the certain characteristics that he kind of honed in on you've got the cheeks that come out he identified those and just went super crazy with those so you can definitely see that kind of went exaggerated there and then the way that those come down into the chin and exaggerated that chin out i think that works really well and then the next characteristic would be the the hair here out swoops down did a really good job there and then kind of like the extra lines here under the eyes i think is a really good choice and i just i love the energy that this gives off it just translates really well into the uh the picture so fantastic job robert thanks for sharing uh, next up is Justin, and Justin went with a cartoon self-portrait, and I think this is one of uh, Justin's first posts in the group too, so welcome Justin, uh, glad to have you. And you can see here, went with a super cute cartoony style, and the one thing that I would kind of recommend, like I said before, is looking at those different identifying characteristics that you can use to kind of translate this picture over to this picture. Obviously you've got the beard is going to be one of the big ones and then the glasses. I think the glasses work really well, but the beard itself, um, you've got more of just a, a straight line beard here coming down the way that it, it kind of comes off the face and then down here. It's more, I guess, squared off from the way the rest of the face works. So if we kind of draw the building blocks like we talked about before with the cartooning videos, uh, let's see here, whoops. So if we draw this circle around here for the, the head, having the bottom of it here at the nose and then do our line down here, our eyes, and then our mouth here. Um, and I'm not even going to draw the rest of the chin down here because the beard's really going to do that work. And then we kind of bring this off. You can kind of see the makeup of the face. Of course, you can start to exaggerate the uh, the different uh, characteristics like did in the previous one. But I think with here, you would really want to kind of focus on the beard and uh, focus on the head. And if we also look at this, let's do, uh, let's see, let's do a new layer here. Um... I think looking here, I see the beard as being the major makeup of the design. Uh, the the portion of your face, I, of course, the, the mouth is a little hidden by the beard. Uh, the major portion of your face here from the nose up is really going to be a small portion of the overall uh, design or drawing itself. So, get back. So, if we go ahead and just on your face, go from the top of 
the head down to the nose. And then we're going to move that then. So we've got that top of the head down to the nose. And then from the nose down to the bottom of the beard, which the bottom of the beard is cut off, but there we go. And then we kind of line these up together. Oops. So you can see this was the, the top portion from the nose to the top of the head, and this was the the portion from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the beard. You can see that bottom of the nose to the bottom of the beard is quite long. So now let's go ahead and trail these over here. And so the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the beard. And you can see this is already kind of trailing off the screen right there. And then if we go from the, the top or the bottom of the nose to the top of the head, I think you can kind of see now uh, what I was talking about. So with the way that the, the facial features are set up here, I don't think it really reads, you know, that this is you in the picture just because like this, I would have made just this section here, you know, the, the top of the hair here. To kind of give you an idea so the the eyes would need to be smaller in here and then the bottom of the beard is going to come down quite a bit so if we put that kind of into action then you know your your beard's going to come down here we'll have the hair up here kind of following this around and then the smaller section up here this is going to be where you know you actually put in the face and stuff i'll just knock in stuff here real quick just so you can see the overall just fast layout look it's got a, a really varied look from here, and the majority has to do with this section of skin here that you can see from the nose to the bottom of the, the hair, and then this beard section being so much bigger and longer than that section there. So, like I said, just kind of break down if you're, especially with you, if you're using digital art, you know, have the, uh, the options to kind of deconstruct a picture by using those lines. Definitely do that to kind of see the building blocks. And then you can start to kind of expand stuff out and, and stretch it and change the perspective. So, uh, but fantastic job, Justin. Thanks so much for sharing. It was really, really good. Uh, next up is Melinda. And Melinda did, uh, just like Kike, a more traditional uh, pencil drawing. And I think she said this was her first ever attempt at doing a self-portrait. So a very good uh, first attempt. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and much like we talked about with um, Justin's, uh, with this one, I think the, the biggest thing here is to really kind of worry about perspective. And then also like talking about with his is just the overall makeup of the face and how everything's laid out. So the, the perspective and the proportions are super, super important uh, with that. I love the, the work that you did here with the hair. And I think that works out really well. The shading is really nice and a very good start. You got this neck part down here uh, done really, really well. Uh, with the, the face here though, like I said with his, if you're not using digital art, you could actually take this picture and just print it out. And if you just kind of start tracing over top of it and just kind of get a layout for where everything goes just with lines like this, it'll help you really kind of understand the, the proportions of the face, where everything goes and how everything ties in together. And then you can kind of start piecing everything together once you start drawing on your actual paper. Um, if you need to, you can use like a light box or something like that. Or if you just look from one picture to the next, it's going to be a lot easier to kind of get the feel where everything goes just by deconstructing those certain uh, lines there and seeing exactly where the proportions go. Um, also here too, with the eyes, I think honestly, I, the eyes of of course, you don't want them super almond like this, but I think one of the problems with the eyes here is just be careful of how big that you make the overall center of the eye. So the iris and the pupil, you can see here, you've got a lot of white around. And I think this here, you just kind of made these a little too big. So it almost has that like cat-like feel to it that cats have, you know, kind of a more of a, a filled in area of their eyes. Um, it's more, you know, kind of iris and pupil that you're left with. So I'm just going to kind of white out these here a little bit. But if you would just go in and, like I said, more like this picture up here, just make those a little bit smaller to where, you know, you're going to have the eye actually have that 
whiteness to it. And I think that's one of the things that's going to make it better. And then also just not making them, like I said, so perfectly uh, almond shaped. Kind of seeing how the eyes made up in the picture. We'll just do this real quick here. And so you can see there, I think that already makes a big difference. Just not having that entire eye filled in. That would uh, go a long way there. But then also here, like I said, with the, the almond shape, see the, the way the eye curves around, it actually will come up and back and around and down here. So there's a little bit more to it than, you know, just drawing this. So kind of just practice. Uh, I just released that video on how to draw eyes. It's more cartoon based, but uh, I think you can really kind of take some information from that and, and put it to use. But a uh, really fantastic job, Melinda, and can't wait to see more of the stuff you come up with. So fantastic. Uh, and last but not least is Scott. And Scott has uh, another traditional piece here, I believe, or maybe it's it's just drawn on the, the iPad with, um, with the pencil um, brush, but a really good job. I like using this angle and I think that Scott did a really good job of, uh, getting that. The likeness once again is I think kind of spot on really, really good. And just the, the overall angle and just perspective is really cool. I, I really like these sketchy lines too. It does. It really gives a lot of motion to the, the drawing and a lot of energy to it. And it reminded me of some, I was going through files the other day and I don't delete a lot of stuff off the iPad. Um, this personal stuff. And I, I ran across this one the other day and this was the first thing I ever drew on the iPad when I first got it. However many years ago is it going on four? is it four or five years? I can't even remember now. It's a 2014, 2015 when it came out, uh, regardless. Um, and this kind of shows you that same, you know, sketchy feeling. You've got just this loose, just, you know, throwing everything to the wind and just throwing your lines on there and seeing what happens. And Scott did the same thing with this. And I think it works really well. I like that loose, sketchy look and it's it's really well done. Uh, the one thing that I would kind of focus on, uh, just like with Kike's, is kind of the nose section here. So this is obviously a downward shot or a looking upward shot, shot from lower down to up. And I think with the way the nose is here, you've kind of got, to, got the ball coming down and around here. Uh, so I would probably here, if I can get back to the right one here. There we go. Uh, so here, once again, with uh, using the, like the triangle or um, pyramid type option. Let me get this over to the sketching pencil so it'll look a little bit more like what he's done here. Um, you know, kind of use that triangle option here to where you're going to kind of see that you're looking underneath the nose and then you can kind of pull that up and around and then trail this kind of off and back so that it has more of that angle look to it and you're looking from down to up. Uh, and I think that would play in a little bit better just so you've got the, the correct angle there, but absolutely fantastic job. And uh, really good. I liked your comment too. I think you said something about, um, you know, police are looking for this. <laughs> and it kind of has that uh, police uh, wanted poster feel to it um, and sketch artist feel. But I think it's absolutely fantastic, Scott. So thanks so much for sharing. And those are the six different self portraits from this week. So thanks so much for sharing, guys. All right, guys, that's it for this week's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks to everyone that submitted designs as well. And if you liked today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Um, also, this week, I actually took part in the weekly art challenge. I did a self-portrait and made that the first ever Patreon-exclusive Let's Draw. So hop on over to the Patreon if you want to be a backer. You can get exclusive access to that along with a bunch of other cool rewards. So for this week, uh, we did a self-portrait last week. For this week, this word is going to be circus punk. So if you don't know what a circus punk is, I get a lot of comments on the different things that I have constantly in the background to the videos, and I kind of switch them up sometimes too. It's a little like Easter eggs, but a circus punk is this type of thing right here. So um, basically the old school like carnival game where you would throw a ball at something and it would knock down. Uh, this is actually an exclusive Gris Grimley 
Circus Punk. If you don't know who he is, uh, he's a children's book artist who does some really creepy stuff and does a lot of really awesome watercolors. So check him out online if you've not heard of him yet. Uh, but this was like a limited edition thing he did. It signed as like 50 of these made. So super limited edition, but there's like this whole like subculture of these circus punks and it's a like a new collectible type thing uh, not new i mean it's been around and this thing is actually a few years old now but anyways look it up online you can see what people have done i think it's cool because everybody's going to have kind of like the same basic shape to work with got the same canvas and then you can just create whatever face you want on there or there's people that did a lot of cool stuff with it over the years so hop on google check out circus punk learn a little bit as well as draw so as for me, besides the Patreon, I can be found online, bjdell.com, and Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.